Well, what's going on, you guys? Welcome to another episode of Business Every Day. My name is Jonathan, and today what we're going to be discussing is my one-month review of the Inventables 2021 X-Carve. I have had this machine for almost exactly four weeks, and I will be telling you today some of the things that I have learned about assembling this machine, what I like about it, what I don't like about it, how I've begun to incorporate it into my daily making, and what the the future is for this machine and how I think it will be utilized going forward. So let's jump right on in into what I think about the X-Card machine. The first thing that I want to discuss is price. I purchased the newly released 2021 X-Carve bundle. This machine came with the new Makita router, the upgraded Z-axis, the upgraded stepper motors, the dust collection system, the whole lot. This machine cost me around $25-$2700 uh, to purchase, uh, unassembled of course. And my decision on going with the bundle versus buying all the components separately was if you do the math, it's actually a few hundred dollars cheaper to buy it as a bundle. They were also running a Black Friday special, which allowed me to save a couple hundred bucks. And I decided that if I'm going to go and buy this machine, I'm going to go ahead and go all out. Now, the reason I bought the X car versus some of the other brands out there was its track record. Now there are other machines that have similar track records, but Inventables is probably going to be the first DIY CNC machine that's been out there at least the longest as far as I am aware. And because of the forum basis, the YouTube videos that are already out there, that is the reason that I decided to go with the Inventables X-Carve. I think there are other machines out there that are slightly more robust. Uh, but they do not come with their own proprietary software. They do not come with any sort of helps, tips, tricks. They don't come with their own customer support line. And so that's why I said, okay, I'm gonna start my CNC journey with a machine that has one, a track record, a support system, and a community of people that I can engage with and provide content to, but also receive information from on how they utilize the machine. I think the biggest question for x car potential buyers is the assembly process. I gotta say, it was rather intense. Um, I'm fairly handy with electronics and different sort of motor components, and it was difficult for me. I put in 25, 30 hours into the assembly process of this machine, not to mention all of the calibration that was required and sometimes even the reassembly because I just did it wrong. Uh, you need to check out my other videos on my, I documented the full assembly process to actually see um, what it takes to assemble the this machine. Uh, it is rather difficult just from a technical standpoint. Uh, if you're good with Legos and connects and things like that, you'd probably be pretty good at assembling the x card CNC machine. Um, I will say that the instruction manual that is online is really designed for the previous model machine. They've added some things for the new machine, but because it's so new, um, the instructions aren't as refined. And so there are many steps along the way that are missing. Um, the hardware baggy labeling isn't very clear. And so you gotta be kind of intuitive and kind of three steps forward, one step back kind of a thing. Uh, and you will be left with some extra parts which I did not realize <laughs> as I was going through it. So I freaked out. I was like, okay, so when you buy the bundle, um, they provide all of the components as if you were buying things separately. And so like the Z-axis came with its own hardware, but then the bundle also came with the Z-axis hardware. And so I ended up with double the hardware. And so when you're assembling it, um, it just, it's going to take a lot of time. You're going to learn your machine in and out so that if you need to do repairs or instruct um, someone on how to use the machine or talk to customer service because you're having an issue, uh, you're going to know every single component very, very well. And I appreciate that about XCarve and I also uh, find that as a, that's a potential entry or a barrier to entry because it does take a lot of technical skill to assemble this machine. One of the reasons that I purchased the Inventables X-Carve was 
so that I would have access to the Easel software. Um, when you bought the bundle in November, they were offering a three-year subscription for Easel for free as or just part of the bundle. So I went ahead and did that. And so I have a three-year subscription to the Easel Pro. And the Easel Pro system has some amazing functions to it and also some very limiting factors to it as well. Um, if you have to think of it as two-dimensional modeling versus uh, something like Fusion 360, which is full 3D modeling and you can create components very, very differently. I'm learning Fusion 360 so I can increase my skill with CNC making, uh, but at the moment I've only used Easel. Inventables has a project page in which you can go and pull projects directly from the internet and download them into Easel and then begin to carve, which is super awesome and makes things simple. But you have to still make your own adjustments because of your material, because of the bits that you're using. Uh, not everything is intuitive and plug and play. There is some finesse that is required. Um, zeroing your machine, making sure your homing is correct, making sure your spindle rate, plunge rate, feed rate, all those things are correct before you go ahead and carve your material. I do, however, highly recommend Easel. It is a wonderful piece of software for beginners like myself to get started. Uh, there are many easy tools to use, but it's not you're not overwhelmed by its functionality. It is rather, rather limited, and so there's pros and cons with that, but in its limitations actually brings some comfort because you are not going into realms which you just don't understand. So there are many easy ways to pull in photos, to upload images, JPEGs, PNGs, things like that, that you can then at least start modeling off of. And the forum basis is really good. And so if you have a question about how to do inlays or how to do stamps or how I started with my wood toys, there's a lot of good information already out there by XCarve users that you can pull from. My first cut with my Inventables X-Carve was terrifying. Oh my gosh, it was totally scary uh, because my machine moved for the first time and I was just scared that something was going to break, snap, fall off, go all over the place and kill someone. Uh, <laughs> thankfully, none of that happened. I did not break anything. I have yet to break a bit or plunge it all the way through my t material. I'm always concerned that I'm gonna hit the C-Tracks uh, or T-Tracks, and, and it's just, uh it's a little bit stressful. But I would highly recommend, as your first car start with something super simple, um, just a quick outline or something like that, just so you can begin to understand what the settings mean and how to change the homing position for the bit, which I'll do a video on later. It's super easy, but when you're first getting started, it, it seems overwhelming and complicated because yeah, I cut through some clamps and I thankfully didn't have stock material go flying everywhere, but uh, your first carve um, can be intimidating because you are trying out your new $2,500 machine for the very first time and it could break. Um, if nothing else, I've learned that this machine is super powerful and you can break it, which is daunting and scary and there's an excitement there as well. But the machine is more capable than I am at the moment. And so learning to communicate with it properly so that we have an understanding and we can work well together is something that I'm still trying to achieve. So it all comes down to, would I recommend the Invitables X-Carve? In simple, yes. But I would put caveats on that and say it all depends on what you are trying to do in your making space. For me, I am exploring the wood toy business and a few other avenues that I will be selling products or templates or things like that um, with my x card machine. I wouldn't be able to do that otherwise. And so that was my intent and my purpose of purchasing this device. And so I have a little bit different spin on the reasons why I can justify the spending of the money, spending the time, was because I wanted to challenge myself, but also this is a business avenue in which I'm trying to explore. As a hobbyist, personally, uh, I, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot of money to spend on a machine that you may or may not use. 
for me, I have a compelling uh, component to this that I have to use it because I'm trying to pay for it within the first six months with the products that I sell. And so I have a goal to achieve. If you are just looking to explore this as something to add to your shop, um, I would really make sure that you have a clear idea of what you want to do with this machine, the things that you want to make, the templates, the inlays, whatever it is that you are already doing, how you would incorporate this machine into your shop, into your normal making practices. Otherwise, it's an intimidating machine and I could see myself assembling it, struggling to assemble it, and then not wanting to play with it a lot because it is there's a difficult learning curve. Um, overall, I highly recommend the machine. Um, there's going to be just an increased uh, amount of information about this machine as time goes forward, as the forums grow, as the YouTube content grows. And so it'll become easier and easier to do things with your X-Car. But it is a huge learning curve to learn to incorporate this machine into my daily life. I had a project that I was doing for my own home uh, yesterday where I was... Uh, going to build a snowboard mount where I was wanting to mount my snowboard on the wall and I was just going to go to Amazon and pay 15 bucks to buy snowboard clamps, uh, mounting clamps. And I had to recalibrate my brain and I'm still doing this is like, no wait, before I go and buy something like that, I could actually make it. And so I spent about 30 minutes 3D modeling this little clamp. I had to prototype three or four different types to get the sizing correct and the dimensions correct and the material right. And I spent about an hour, an hour and a half building this little clamp. And then I was able to build this full mount system for my snowboard. But it did take me an extra, you know, the extra bit of time, but I saved the $15 or so. Um, and learning to do that more and more and more so that I first think, can I make this? Can I create this? Can I model this? Before I say, can I just go and buy it? And so everything from shelves to clamps to toys to models to anything that's two dimensional with some three, di three dimension is something that I need to recalibrate my brain to say, no, first make it, first model it, see if there's a model already out there to jumpstart my process and then seek out a secondary option. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. I really appreciate all of the love and support that I've been getting uh, with my content. I do recommend the Inventables X-Carve machine for you makers, hobbyists, entrepreneurs out there. It is a wonderful device. It is also scary. It is a good bit of money, but it has been a fun process to learn to incorporate this machine into my everyday, and then hopefully create an entire new uh, avenue in my life for, for revenue and projects and just a whole lot of fun and sharing this with my friends and family and you all online. Uh, it's just been exciting. So I want to thank you and let's keep carving. Catch you guys later.